Okay, given that we will have, we're trying to build a feedback controller, what is its goal? What does it want to do? So the goal of a feedback controller, of actually of any control, is to ensure that y equals r. In other words, the output y matches the reference at all times. In fact, we have a disturbance w, so we want to say y equals r despite w. That would be the ideal situation. Uh, so, of course, this is not going to happen all the time. So let's go back to our example of the temperature controller. So here is time, and here is the temperature. And our reference value r is this. So this is r, let's say 25 degrees, and that's r. And what you're showing only is temperature, which is y. And what we want to do is that we want the temperature to always be at that value. And we're not going to be able to achieve it. But what can we achieve is that let us say that the temperature is over here and it stays here and it uh, drops due to disturbance W. Then at this point, obviously, we're not meeting the criterion. Um, we'd like to get back to R or close to it fairly soon. And so let's say that we're within 95% of the uh, reference value, and it takes some time over here, so that's called the delta T. This is called the settling time. This is how long it takes before the system gets back into a reasonable approximation of our uh, design goal. And then it's possible that after we enforce the control, we don't actually stay there, but we're slightly off, and this gap over here will be the steady state error. And it's possible that there will be a steady state error. Now, we are making some effort in order to get from here to there. So there's some control effort over here. And an additional goal that we sometimes have is to minimize the control effort, if you can do that. Because typically, a control effort costs you uh, in energy or actually there's a monetary cost to it. Okay, so let's compare sort of three systems uh, and which have slightly different uh, setups and see how they behave. So the first system is an uncontrolled system. And uh, another system would be a feedback control system. And then the other one is what you can think of as a predictive uh, system, predictive control system, control system. So in an uncontrolled system, so let us say we take the same graph over here. So um, here is the temperature Y and here's the time T. And that's the reference over here. And again, as before, we will start like this. And we get a disturbance at this time W, which draws the temperature down. With the uncontrolled system, we are basically not going to recover because there's nothing that uh, there's no way for the system to even know that the output does not match the input. And so an uncontrolled system leads to a very large error. The settling time is infinite, and the steady state error can be also unbounded. OK, so let's try to make things a bit better. In the feedback control system, ideally, we'd like to go have a graph that looks like that. It quickly achieves its, its value over here. And within a fairly short period of time, it achieves the right things. So that would be the feedback control system. But we also have the possibility of building a predictive control system, which says, if at, time, if, if at this time over here, this point over here, just before the disturbance, I know that there's going to be a disturbance. Let's say I know that somehow I've been told there's going to be a disturbance. Then what I can do is that I can almost immediately compensate for it quite quickly because I know there's going to be a disturbance and predict the disturbance and then I can get back to the right position. And that would be what we would do with predictive control. Now, predictive control requires us to, in some sense, know the future. And it's also, it need, we need to know how the system behaves very accurately. But if you can do these two things, then we can actually build a very robust and very uh, highly performing system. And so what we need is a system model. And we also need a good predictor. And so there is a 
form of control called model predictive control, or often abbreviated to MPC, which in fact uses these ideas of prediction and system model to build controllers, and we will actually look at that in a little bit more detail later on. Okay, so uh, in the next part of this, I look into the constraints that the feedback system needs to obey when trying to do control actions.